So before we start with today's session, let's have a little recap on what we did last time. We were looking at counting in hours, and one of the things that we looked at there was how many hours were there in a day. And we worked out that was 24, and it was split into two groups of 12. We had our morning time for before noon, or the anti-meridian, and then we had the afternoon, the post-meridian. And those two 12s put together gave us our full day, starting at midnight and ending at midnight. So, this is our first question. Without counting each separate hour, how many hours are there until 3 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday? So looking at the first clock, it shows us a time and it tells us that time is Tuesday morning. Then we're shown our second clock, which we now know is 3 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. So without counting all the individual hours, 1, 2, 3 and so on, how many hours separate the time on Tuesday morning and 3 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday? Pause the video and calculate that, and then come and join me when you've got an answer. So let's see if you're right. We know there's 24 hours in a day, so if it's 1 o'clock in the morning on Tuesday, which we can see on the first analog clock, we can jump forward 12 hour, 24 hours straight away, which will give us 1 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. That's 24 hours. So now we're at 1 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday, and we're going to count forward to 3 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. So 1 o'clock till 2 o'clock is 1 hour, 2 o'clock till 3 o'clock is another hour. So that's 2 hours. We had our 24 hours between 1 o'clock Tuesday, 1 o'clock on Wednesday, and our 2 hours between 1 o'clock on Wednesday and 3 o'clock on Wednesday. To give us 24 plus 2, an answer of 26. So without counting each separate hour, how many hours are there until 3 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday? we have 26 hours between 1 o'clock on a Tuesday morning and 3 o'clock on a Wednesday morning. Now in today's session we're going to be looking at how to estimate the time and what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be looking at an analog clock, the one with the hands that turn round rather than the digital clock which is just the numbers and we are only going to focus on the hour hand this time and we're going to learn how the movement of the hour hand can allow us to estimate the time which means basically we're going to say it we're not going to be exact but we're going to be close to what we it is and it means there's a little bit of flexibility so i could have one answer you could have another they could be slightly different but we're both still right the only time we worry with an estimate is if my estimate is completely different to yours and then we'd have to look to see why mine is this and why yours is that and work out whose method and strategy is the best so this is just about estimating it means i might say something and you might be a little bit more a little bit less but you're still going to be the same so opening up our textbook, we can see our first question, which relates to the clock on the wall. Question 1a, how can we estimate the time even though the minute hand has fallen off? And for this question, what I want you to be thinking about is, firstly, how many minutes are there in an hour? And then secondly, I want you to think of how many minutes does it take for that hour hand to move between one set of numbers on the clock and the next set of number on the clock. And then for question 1b, I'm asking, what time do you estimate is on the clock on the wall? And when you're answering this question, I want you to be thinking, where is that hour hand pointing? What number has the hour hand passed, and what number is it trying to reach? Because this will help you estimate what time it's going to be. So, for question 1a, how can we estimate the time even though the minute hand has fallen off a clock? And question 1b, what time do you estimate the clock on the wall shows? So pause the video now. Go away and try and solve these two problems, then come and join me when you've got an answer to share and we can look at the strategies you used. So let's have a look at question 1a. How can we estimate the time even though a minute hand has fallen off the clock? Well, you were asked for two questions. How many minutes are there in one hour? And the answer to that is there's 60. And the second question was, how many minutes does it take for the hour hand to move between two numbers? And the two numbers we're going to use in this case are 2 and 3. And we know that if 1 hour is 60 minutes, to travel between 2 and 3, it's going to take 60 minutes. So when I've travelled no minutes, I'll be on the 2. And when I've travelled 60 minutes after about 2 o'clock, I'll end up on the 3. And the hour hand will move depending on the time. It won't just suddenly jump from 2 to 3. Now we can see that my hour hand has moved. It's moved halfway between the 2 and the 3. So what I can work out now is what time this approximately is. So if we know that 1 hour is 60 minutes, half of 60 will be 30. 
So in this case, I'm after two o'clock but before three. So that means I'm 30 minutes after two o'clock or half past two. And I can use exactly the same method if I'm looking at the idea of quarters. I could simply take that idea for two and three and break that into quarters. And then I can work out how many minutes is in each quarter because I know one hour is 60. So to work out one quarter is 60, I've got 60 divided by four. And in this case, that will give me an answer of 15. An easy way of thinking this is if I halve it, then halve it again. So half of 60 is 30, half of 30 is 15. And then this shows me that on my blue line, I'm quarter of the way between 2 and 3. So this is quarter past 2 or 2.15. If we then look at the green line, that's 2 quarters past. So that's 15 and another 15, 30 minutes past 2 or half past 2 or 2 quarters past 2. And if we look at our final, the red division, well, that's 1 quarter, 2 quarters and 3 quarters. So that's 3 quarters of an hour past 2 o'clock, which is 15. 30, 45. So that red line is 2, 45. So if we look at that question for 1B, what time do you estimate it is? We can see that that hour hand is between 10 and 11. We can see that the hour hand is after 10, but before 11. And we can see that it's about halfway between 10 and 11. So that tells me that I'm dealing with 10 something, and in this case, half an hour past 10 or 10.30. So let's see whether we can do that and follow those strategies just before we move on to the rest of the questions in our textbook. For this question, I want you to use the hour hand to estimate the time. So you can see on the left, I've got the whole clock and on the right, I've got a close up of where that clock is with a little bit of information to help you. And you've got three sentences that are going to help you and get to where you are towards where you need to be. And sentence one is, the hand is between what hour and what hour? The time is after what hour, but before which hour? And once you've found those two bits of information, the question then is, the hour hand, has it reached the halfway point or not reached the halfway point? And that will help you to be able to identify the time. So pause the video, and I want you to try and estimate what time the clock is showing. Come and join me when you've got an answer. We can have a look at what your strategy's been. So let's have a look at this. So we know that the hand is between 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock. We know that the time is after 6, but before 7. So it means that we're working with 6 hours and some minutes. Now, in this case, we can see that the hour hand has not reached halfway. So it's before 30. And if we look, we could make a rough estimate and go, it's about halfway between the halfway point and 6 o'clock which means it's halfway between no minutes and 30 minutes and half of 30 is 15. So we could estimate this to be around 6.15 or quarter past six. Now we talked about estimates. So my view would be if you're telling me that it's 10 past six, 11 minutes past six, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 or 20. So between 10 past six and 20 past six, I'd probably say you've estimated it close enough. So now you've finished that, what I'd like you to do is move on to the rest of your textbook before you move on to those independent activities. And I look forward to seeing how you get on with this estimation. Good luck.